Hello and welcome to the Masters Disc Golf World Championships in Flagstaff, Arizona. This is a PDGA Major presented by MVP Disc Sports. Coverage brought to you by Ace Run Pro. I'm Holly Finley. And I'm Jennifer Allen. Starting out the day, round four, we have Owen Scoggins at 24 under, Holly Finley 21 under, Stephanie Vinson at 15 under, and myself at 11 under. We are back at the Little America Crew Course. You can see some familiar names and new names on our top 10 leaderboard. And here we are on hole one, a 272 foot par three. The basket is on the right side of the fairway. If you are good at shot shaping as a right-handed, backhanded player, you can do a bit of a turnover or possibly sneak in on that inside route and get a birdie look. Four-handed players will also have an advantage on this hole. You can also just throw straight ahead off the tee and get yourself a circle's edge putt for birdie. So Owen opting at the forehand because it is um, a great route to get over there to the basket. Difficult with the lava rocks all over this course to get the skips that you want. Owen lands in the bush. Holly going with her trusty old Mako. Do you expect that to turn more or are you just trying to go straight? Because it does hyzer out for you a, a little bit, but going right at it almost. I'm kind of just trying to land in the circle, mm -hmm. not forcing to park it. Stephanie from Texas and definitely her and I both probably throw the least amount of forehands on the card. Stephanie, I believe, was looking for more of a shot shaping right at the basket as she did in the previous day. We have Miss Jennifer Allen. I've played this course a few times um, in warm ups with a, a local event here, and I love this hole typically. Um, I try to go for the huge turnover. Um, definitely trying to play into that wind a little bit too much and got caught up there on this first little branch, just right off the tee. So just going with my Yeti putter, just throwing it up towards the basket. Literally could throw a sandstill putter. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Stephanie Vincent for a long birdie look. She gives it a jump, she'll have a drop in par. Yeah, jump putts are hard out here with all the rocks. Um, Definitely have to commit to him if you're going to try the jump putt. I've got a 40 footer. A little bit right side. Not too mad about that. No, that was a good bit at it. And Own is in the circle, but she, this tree is just very obstructed. Yes. Even standing difficult there. And I really commend Own for placing herself in between the limbs instead mm -hmm. of using her body to push them back. And Jen makes good for the par putt. She really just worked her way right into the opening of that Yeah, tree. she did a great job. Try not to mess with the surroundings at all. So everyone's going to start the day with a par, and we're gonna move over to hole two. Hole two is 310 feet downhill, par three. Have to be very straight shot hitting this gap. You can hyzer off and still have a look once you get through the middle here, 
but if you can continue to work your way straight, you're gonna have a look at the basket. This hole does play slightly downhill, so you can use a mid or a fairway here. Own makes it about halfway to the green. Yeah, and I think that's, she threw that like she wanted to. You mm -hmm. really have to keep the nose down. A little a early misfire. release. Yeah. Make it about a quarter away to the green. This is a heavily wooded property, and so sometimes you can get lucky and find a new route, and sometimes you get in gel. So you just never know. Yeah, Stephanie hits the main gap and makes it about 30 feet past Owen's disc. And that opening to the left, if you can make it there, you, you have a, some pretty good looks at the basket. And Jen throwing that Halo Rock 3. Got a tree kick and inside the circle. Yeah, that would have went just a little long. You think? <laughs> not, not too bad. And I don't really have a super clean look here, but I have a bit of a hyzer. And I end up hitting my yeah. hand on the tree. No, that was a very difficult lie. This one looks a little more open. And that was a good stop as well. Sometimes we get the tree love. Yeah, those trees by the basket are friendly today. Stephanie Vincent's second shot, a nice controlled floating putter approach. She'll have a 15 foot par putt. Her touch on her short game is really good. Owns under the basket for par. Nope. I knew right out of my hand. I did not raise. I think walking up to it, I thought I was going to have to kind of hyzer around that tree. So I just let it go on a straight hyzer angle. Good solid putt from Holly. Stephanie Vincent makes good for her par here on the second. Starting off the day a little hotter out here, and I think... I think it's the hottest day of the week so far. It is. Unfortunately, I think tomorrow is going to be even hotter, and those who do make the cut and on to the finals, it's going to be a, a long day out in the heat. Pars for everyone, and we're on to the third. Except for me. I got a bogey. <laughs> Here we are on hole three, a shorty, only 196 feet, a par three, but really uphill. Also, you can't actually see the whole basket from the tee. You need to pick your line, hopefully that you chose in practice, and sneak up here next to this down tree. As long as you make it somewhere near this tree, you have yourself a birdie putt. Yeah, this hole definitely plays a little longer than um, 200 feet. I would say maybe closer to 250. This is a pretty steep incline. Owen's going forehand. It goes for the wider gap. Definitely a couple ways to get up the hill. She's going to be about circle's edge. Stephanie, a little low out of the hand, skips right to the top of the hill, and she'll have a... About a circle's edge putt for Birdie. Yeah, she had a lot more forward skip than I thought she was going to. Ooh, I love the height on that. I was a little unhappy with how much nose up. Um, it had a good stall at the end. It did, and that typically, instead of stalling, will go a little more to the right for me. You're going Mako as well, just getting caught up on that kind of... I used a Mirage. Oh, I think that that's was why a I pull, switch. Pulled it okay. over to the it right. It looks just like your Mako. Yeah. It's a good choice for this hole, though. Mm -hmm. I actually pulled my Mirage out to practice a little bit and then put it back. Stephanie Vincent for birdie from Circle's Edge. Oh, good bid. Nice height. Little right side. She'll have to settle for par. 
And Jen made it up and over behind the basket in for birdie, right over the nubs. Little sneaker. Gotta get going here. I love getting a birdie on that hole. Yeah, that's a fun one. It's short, but it's not easy. No, it's not. Owns Scoggins for birdie. I don't think any of them really are. You know, there's a lot of holes out here. If people just looked at the distance and didn't see the course, I think they would think we should be shooting 15 down. (laughs) And Owns putt fell out left side. She'll drop in a par here on the third. Holly trying to knock the basket over again. This one wiggles a little bit. You need to be careful. In for par. I was told by Bill Block, who's um, the TD for this event, that they will be pulling this one in and out on the crew course. It's not going to be permanent, but the long course will be permanent. Hole number four, this is 359 feet. Par three, you're going to try to shoot it as straight as possible. The slope angle of this hole does tend to pull the disc down and hyzer them off to the left side. Um, so if you can sneak a hyzer route through the, the trees there on the right, you might end up towards the basket. Otherwise, you're just trying to hope to go as far as, as you can down the fairway. Jennifer Allen up first after a solo birdie on the third. I'm going with a TL, and it. I love the stall of the TL. That's why I pick it. Um, I have never went past the basket on this hole. <laughs> Jennifer it usually, flies 100 <laughs> past the basket. It usually hyzers off. So that was, I mean, it was just carried. We don't really have a lot of wind out there yet. And own with the ultimate sneak route, and she is up there putting for birdie. Yeah, that's the way I think, like, if you could really trust getting through. Stephanie trying to sneak it as well. I don't think she said she didn't mean to go that far of a hyzer, but it, it's really a great line if you cannot hit any of those 40 trees on the right. Mm-hmm. You're taking the perfectly straight route that's just going to give you a little bit of skip to the left. A little low. I was worried more about centering the gap than Mm -hmm. getting to the basket. And that's left me with a 55-footer. And I decide, why not send it up there and see what happens? Yeah, soft bid. I love those. Stephanie has a look for birdie from 45. Good bit as well. Just again, just a hair right. I think I'm about 55 feet away. <laughs> and I'm just going to lay this up. Um, just because of the rocks, you never know what you're going to hit and could mm-hmm. roll. And it's slightly elevated. It is. Own, taking no time at all, smashing a birdie putt in. She'll take a two here on hole four. And with her speed and spin on the disc there, that was kind of a death putt. So it sure is. Solid hit there. Stephanie's in for par. Wind picking up just a little bit, as it tends to do out here. Noah with the umbrella. I think we're all going to be shade hunting a little more than usual. Had to bring the sun umbrella today. Temperature in the 90s. Let's check out hole five, a 300 foot par three. Off the tee, I prefer a little hyzer shot, possibly something with a bit of a skip that could get you a putt for birdie. I've also seen some success with the forehand as well as a turnover shot. Yeah, definitely one of my favorite holes that they give you both options. So very fair hole for any thrower. First up, Own Scoggins after a solo birdie on the fourth. Takes the forehand route, pulls it a bit wide. And But long. you know what? She's about 45 feet looking at birdie. Yeah, this one... I keep going back and forth if I feel like it actually plays like 300. I think it does, Mm -hmm. Um, especially if you go the hyzer route. I really wanted to see where that disc was going to go if it would have been caught up on that branch. 
Um, but the turnover route, the left side, I, I feel like you can go long a little easier on that side. Stephanie was going for the hyzer route, but pulls it a little to the right side. She got great distance on the shot, but she's in circle three for her birdie look. And I miss my line, but somehow end up right down here at circle's edge. Yeah, that's over there by Owens. Totally different route to get to that point. Nice little soft turnover bid. Unfortunately, gets caught up in the branch near the basket. Scoggins for birdie from 45. A little chain out, but catches edge, and that's going to roll in about 25 feet or so. And this is one of the holes I feel like it's a pretty flat putting area. Great birdie there by Holly. What was that? Circle yeah, right outside Two, yeah. circle one. I'd yeah, say 38 feet. Nice. Oh, and a little right side for her par comeback. And Jennifer Allen's disc hit that tree and dropped right by the basket, and she's in for birdie right over the nubs again. <laughs> Gotta wake up. Gotta get them a little bit higher here. Stephanie makes good for her par. That's one thing I find interesting. I see... The wind can be different for every single player yes. when it's their turn to putt. That is so true. And I've even heard the men saying that at the other courses as well. Own with a bogey here on the fifth. Hole number six. This is our longest hole so far, 558 feet, sloping downhill towards the right side. This is a par four. Again, just trying to get down the middle as straight as you can. There is a slight hyzer route there on the right side that you can take as well. But with this drastic slope, it's very hard to get that disc to hyzer back up the hill. So most of us are going to try to get that sh straight gap and then try to get your approach somewhere near circle one. Jennifer Allen up first. And I'm just trying, I'm really not trying to put too much of a flex on that. And I did not feel like I threw it up in the air. I think I got a little wind bounce that pulled me up into that branch. I was curious if you were going for that high of a shot. No, or... I really feel like it sucked it up when I let it go. I pulled mine over a bit, but I made it about 300 feet down the fairway. And I think anywhere around there is just fine. And I like this unique route from Stephanie. I accidentally did that in practice with a lightweight disc. And it's not a bad spot to be. It's not. You just have to be very careful not to pull it because if you're trying to shoot back up the hill, that's a very difficult shot. Own likes Stephanie's route, and she decides to take it as well. Would you do that if you saw someone take it, a route that you didn't practice and just like, oh, okay, let me try it? I actually did it on this <laughs> course, yes. <laughs> I changed my game plan the first day I was here. So I range this, I'm about 340 feet out, but it's slightly downhill. And I missed my line. I meant to go hyzer and then sort of just lazy, you know, lazy in next mm -hmm, to the basket. Mm -hmm. So now I've got about a 50 foot downhill putt for birdie. I also pretty close distance to Holly and had two routes. I could take the turnover route or the hyzer route. Um, I went ahead and went with the turnover just because there was a lot more open air with that one before the trees kind of took place. So trying to take the percentages there. Own going forehand. Stand still. And gets a lot of distance on that little bit of a hop. Not too much of a roll. It was more the skip that got her. Right. She'll have a 50-foot uphill birdie putt. And Stephanie Vincent, who took the unique hyzer route on the right side, ended up with the longest drive and sends it too low. And that's... That's just annoying, you know, when you mm -hmm. have the best drive and then you mm -hmm. sort of muck it up on the way to the basket. I feel like I've done that a time or two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we all have. <laughs> so this is a pretty steep downhill putt from probably about 40, 45. It is 50 feet. And unfortunately, yeah. I was looking at that. Walker. I oh. was, and I putted right at that person. And that's just a personal error. I should have laid up if I couldn't focus. Own for birdie. And I saw you wait. Oh, that's a good catch of the pole. I realized I would. I don't have enough time to wait him out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was too far for me to yell. There's other people playing the course. I so. didn't see him walking, but I did. You know, I saw you 
noticed that you were waiting and I couldn't decide if you were trying to de decide if you were going for it or not. So unfortunately, Holly misses that comeback. This is Stephanie for birdie. For par. Oh, that's right. She did have the second shot. So that's going to be a bogey for Stephanie. Just a hair low. And this is you for birdie. Yeah, probably about 25 feet. That one I finally got a little more solid spin on. Yeah, they changed the rules on the PDGA um, time limit now. You, As long as the playing area is clear between you and the basket and around the basket, you can't wait out distractions mm -hmm. several hundred feet away. So. so we have a couple of bogeys there, and we're going to move on to hole number seven. Look at this fun downhill 194-foot par 3. It's really just your choice on how you can park it. I like a standstill uh, with a fairway and a little bit of a spike hyzer. I found success with a putting approach, also a low skip shot, um, or even just a straight ahead putter shot. Mm -hmm. This is our first hole that OB does come into play, that little road that you see back there. So very easily you can find that road by either throwing too long or hitting up on the hill by the basket and just rolling back down. I'm going with an AVR X3 and just doesn't hyzer in quite as quick as I thought it would. I notice now that wind, that crosswind, so it might have held it out. Own going with a hyzer skip and that's about where she landed the previous time on, on this hole. Holly stands still. That's a beautiful drive, unfortunate roll down. Yeah, that'll give me about a 25 footer for birdie. Stephanie going standstill as well. A bit little more lower. of a straight yeah. shot. I don't think that's what she was intending. Yeah, but she still like, has a birdie putt. Looked like it came out just a hair early, so this is a pretty big death putt. It's nervy. Yeah, very. It's a drastic, drastic downhill putt with OB again, like I said, right behind the basket. I'd say 70% of the time I would lay this putt up. And sometimes those soft little bids can get you in trouble. So luckily she stays right there by the basket up on the hill. That's a little bit of a rock cliff right behind the basket. Scoggins for birdie from 30. Mm, doesn't connect and takes no. a, just a hair of a roll. Luckily that does stop oh. before it heads a little further towards the OB. This is probably about 25, again, drastic uphill. Was able to keep the height on it all the way up. And it's so steep, you gotta walk all the way around to get up there. <laughs> it's two birdies in a row for Jennifer Allen. Three birdies in a row. <laughs> and then Holly's gonna join me there for the two. Own makes good for her par. Own doesn't let things like a slight little roll away stress her out. No, you know? no she, she handles it well. She's such it's a like strong a, putter. You can see there's just no, she just, it doesn't bother her at all that her, you know, putter just rolled away a little bit and gave mm -hmm. her a longer par putt. She just walks up there as if it was the original putt and puts it in. Maybe you have to be thankful, like mindset that it didn't roll OB maybe. Mm -hmm. Here we are, hole number eight. This plays a lot longer than 183 feet because it is straight back uphill. Par three, try to find yourself a gap there and hyzer off to the left just a little bit. Definitely more of a right-handed hole. Lefties and turnover shots are a little bit harder to get all the way up to the top. this plays about 230. Mm -hmm. Feels about the distance I'm throwing it to get and up I'm just to the basket. going hyzer. It just doesn't hyzer quick enough. So um, I blame my son for cooking a nice steak last night and giving me a little too much juice, too much power. You went out today. the backside? I went just long. It just didn't hyzer. So I'm over the hill. Okay. I'm going with a mid range. Lands a bit short, but that's a 20 foot putt for birdie. 
Oh, um, probably a destroyer. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'd say a high speed disc. She gets up there next to me. She'll have a putt for birdie. And it's, that just shows you like the totally different. I, I think all of us are probably throwing a completely different disc. Stephanie pulling that one a little bit late, maybe trying to overcorrect for the early release on the previous hole. Ooh, that was a kind of a good redirect that there. Was that a lucky tick off the tree. Yeah, that helped her most of the way up the hill. She's got a long putt for birdie. So par. awkward footing. Oh, par, par, yeah. you're right. And gives it a pretty good look. So unfortunately, that's going to be a bogey for Stephanie. And this is probably about 45 feet downhill. Tried to give it a pretty good bid, just didn't hyze her out for me. That's actually a pretty long downhill putt it was, from that angle. It, it was very steep. I was looking at you up there wondering, is she going to go for this or not? But yeah, it's kind of a safe fun. landing yeah, zone. Yeah, those I kind of like the downhill putts. Own misses the birdie putt. Ooh, you're catching left side chain there. These great disc catchers saved you. I've seen a few spits on them this week, but that one holds tight. Own tapping out par. I'll do the same. Own asking me why the heck I'm all the way up on the hill there. And I was like, I, I honestly, own I don't know. I've never been there before. <laughs> Tournament juice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we are, hole nine, another par four, 423 feet. The basket is actually over to the right. Most players are going to go with a bit of a turnover shot between the trees. If you have the power like Jennifer Allen, you can't actually go over the top because right off the tee, the trees aren't that tall. That'll leave you with 150 foot to 100 foot approach into the basket looking for birdie. Now you asked me earlier if I ever changed my game plan. This was it? This was the hole. This was the hole, yeah. I was actually just going straight off the tee mm -hmm. and I realized it's more advantageous to get closer to the basket. Yeah. So yeah. I decided just to go more on the right side. And that left side, if you do even do the turnover and it hyzers out, is where you want to be. So I went too far on the first time we played this. So I switched disc, but I, again, cranked it a little too hard. I wanted that to hyzer a little faster. And unfortunately, I get a kick over there on the right side where I did not want to be. Own oh. hits that gap beautifully. Yeah, she does. Great nice distance. Hyzer finish. And that's actually a good position to be in. Yeah, that's, that's probably prime landing zone for the clean approach, or most open approach, I should say. Mm -hmm. Still difficult. A lot of trees out here on this hole. Stephanie in a similar position to Own, just a little bit further back. I've got about 150 feet into the basket. And not only is the footing hard on this hole, but trying to get the right skip, you just have no clue what it's going to do to your disc when you, it hits the ground up there near the basket. Yeah, I have mine a little low. And I saw you lining up something nothing. special I have special up absolutely here. nothing, so I'm going to try to go spike hyzer. I'm 190 feet away from the basket. I, may, I knew I made it ha about halfway, so I looked at my son, and I was like, okay, well, that's a 90-foot putt. We're fine. <laughs> And it's a par four, so it you is still have four. an extra stroke to work with. If I would have tried to throw straight ahead, I would have never made it. That's a nice, clean release by Stephanie, and she's going to give herself a look for birdie. She has a very smooth approach game. I love her short game. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. And Owen actually with the best drive of the group, sending her rock three right up there to the green. Good stop and, and hop by the rocks. So again, um, can, kind of still stuck with nothing. I'm going to go with a Toro, another hyzer, about 90 feet. I'm um, just picking air and trying to get it up there. And it actually you goes a little... the tree on the way there. A little too far. Not too bad, though. That was very satisfied with that. I've got a 40-footer and just another inch I would have been mm -hmm. in. But it's basically a drop-in par. Yeah, not that I love to be off in the woods, but I do love fun shots. So mm -hmm. I was staying positive with that. Unfortunately, Stephanie doesn't have enough spin on that one. I think that she had said that heat was kind of getting to her. It was starting, you know, we're halfway through, mm -hmm. climbed a couple of hills. She told me she was feeling like her mind and body weren't connected. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the heat will play tricks on you. Own is in for birdie here on the ninth. That puts her at one under for the round, 25 under for the event. I'm in for par. Also at one under for the round, but now at 22 under for the event. Stephanie Vincent in for par. And just like that, we're through nine holes here. So like Holly said, Owens Goggins, 25 under, Holly Finley, 22 under, Stephanie at 13 under, and myself at 15 under. Thanks for joining us for the front nine of round four. Look forward to the back nine coming soon.